Order and rate equations. Let's say we have this reaction. A plus B plus C gives us our products. This reaction has a certain rate or speed. If I was to change the concentration of those reactants, we know that this would affect the speed of the reaction, or in other words, the rate of reaction. However, we want to know how much does the concentration of each reactant affect the rate? Or in other words, what is the order of these reactants? Now the order can be in three categories, zero, first or second. A reactant that has zero order means that changing its concentration will have no effect on the speed of the reaction. First order means that the rate will be proportional to the change of concentration. And in second order, the rate will be the change of concentration squared. Don't worry if this is confusing you, because we're about to do an example right now. So let's say in this reaction, A has zero order, B has first order, and C has second order. Let me show you what it means to have zero order. Let's say we double the concentration of A, and for this example, we're not changing B or C. So we've doubled A, that means we're going to do 2 to the power of 0. This equals 1, which means the rate will be times 1, in other words, the same speed. So we saw that doubling A had no effect on the rate, the speed was unchanged. What about if we times A by 5? So we're going to do 5 to the power of 0, because it's zero order. That gives us 1. Again, the rate will be unchanged. So a reactant that has zero order will never have any influence on the rate of reaction if you change its concentration. Let's move on to first order, so B in this case. If I double the concentration of B, we're going to have 2 to the power of 1 which equals 2. So the rate is going to be multiplied by 2. This is proportional to what happened to B. We doubled B and the rate doubled. How about if we times the concentration of B by 5? 5 to the power of 1 is 5 and therefore the rate will times by 5. Again proportionally to what happened to B. So a reactant that has first order has a proportional effect on the rate of reaction. Let's look at C and see what happens when we have a second order reactant. We're going to times the concentration of C by two. We're going to double the concentration of C. Two to the power of two equals four. So the rate will times by four. This is squared of what happened to C. So as we can see, we multiplied C's concentration by two and the rate was squared. Here's another example. If we times the concentration of C by 5, 5 squared, 5 to the power of 2 equals 25. So the rate will become 25 times faster. Again, squared. Here's one final example. What if we half the concentration of C? Times it by 0 0.5. So half squared equals 1 over 4. That means the rate will become 1 over 4 times faster. That means the rate will times by 1 over 4, or in other words, become 4 times slower. Again, it's still squared. So, in second order, if you increase the concentration, the rate increases by a squared value, so it gets even faster, and if you decrease the concentration, the rate gets even slower, as we saw in this example. Okay, how about if we have two things changing at the same time? Let's say we multiply the concentration of B by 5 and multiply C by 2. Now remember, B is first order and C is second order. What will happen to the total rate? So, 5 to the power of 1 is 5 and 2 to the power of 2 is 4. We're going to times them together and that's going to give us 20, meaning that the rate will become 20 times faster. Now you might be thinking, okay, what about if I changed A? Since A is zero order, it will have no effect. So if we even times A by a million, the rate will still be 20 times faster. Okay, let's look at rate equations. To write a rate equation, we're gonna write the following. Rate equals K, which is a rate constant, times by the concentration of the reactants, 
to the power of their orders. Now we need to simplify this. A to the power of zero is one. Anything to the power of zero is one. That means we can get rid of that. Also, if something is to the power of one, you don't have to write the one. So it can just be like this. That means our final answer will be the following. And this is the rate equation for the reaction above. Let's try a few more examples. Here all three reactants are first order. So this will be the rate equation. Let's do another example. If you want to give it a go, you can pause the video. And the answer is the following. One final example. And this is the answer. Okay, how do we know the order of a reactant? To work out the order, one way is by using the initial rates method. This means we do a series of experiments involving the same reactants. However, each time we change the concentration of reactants one by one. For example, we double A and we don't change B or C. Or we triple A and don't change B or C. Or we triple B and don't change A or C, etc. Every time we do a reaction, we measure the rate of each experiment. Then, from the data, we work out the effect of changing concentration on rate. In other words, we work out the order. Now, when we do these series of experiments, you want to make sure that everything is done at the same constant temperature. This is so that we know that only concentration is changing the rate and there's no other variables. Let's do some examples of the initial rates method. The initial rates method. So let's say we have a reaction A plus B plus C makes products X and Y. We want to know the order of A, B and C. To work out the order, we've been given the following data from initial rates method. So let's say experiment number one is our baseline. What that means is we're going to compare some reactions with experiment one. For example, we can compare one with two to see what has changed. We can see here that B has doubled from 0 0.5 to one. A and C have not changed. Now we look at the rate. The rate has times by four. So from this, let's figure out what the order of B is. Is it zero order, first order, or second order? If it was zero order, two to the power of zero equals one. That means the rate would be unchanged or it will be the same. However, we know the rate has times by four. So it's definitely not a zero order. If it was first order, that gives us two to the power of one which equals two. The rate hasn't multiplied by two either. If it's second order, we'll do two to the power of two, and that gives us four, which matches up with what change has happened to the rate. Okay, perfect. So we know that B is second order. And for all the other experiments, B is gonna remain second order. Let's keep going through the table. We can compare reaction two with reaction three. Here, C has tripled, but A and B have remained constant. The rate has also tripled. So, is C zero order, first order, or second order? If it was zero order, we will do three to the power of zero, which gives us one. The rate hasn't times by one. If it was first order, three to the power of one would give us three. And if it was second order, three to the power of two would give us nine. The rate has multiplied by three, which means that C must be first order. Okay, now let's work out the order of A. So to work out the order of A, we need to know when A has changed. The only time A's concentration has changed is in reaction number four. So we could compare one with four, or two with four, or with three with four. It doesn't matter which one you use. But to make it easier, you wanna pick one in which A has changed and the other ones haven't changed. For example, we could compare reaction two with four. In this one, A has halved, but B and C remain the same. Okay, so A has halved and the rate has also halved. So is A zero order, first order, or second order? If it was zero order, half to the power of zero equals one. If it was first order, half to the power of one equals half. 
and if it was second order, half to the power of 2 equals a quarter. So that means A must be first order. Now that we have all the orders, we can create the rate equation. For this reaction, it's going to be rate equals K times A times B to the power of 2 times C. Let's say we want to work out the value of K. To work out the value of K, we're first going to rearrange the equation. Now we need to put in the data from the experiment. When we select the data, we have to make sure that we select one entire row. So we could select all of these, or these, or these, or these. It doesn't matter which row we pick. However, it has to be the same row. You can't pick random numbers. To make it easier, we'll just use the first one. Here, we're going to put 0 0.5 for A, B, and C, and 0 0.2 for rate. So that gives us the following equation. And this equals 3.2. So now that we have the numerical value for k, let's work out the units of k. Again, we know that, so on top we're going to have rate. The units for rate is moles per dm cubed per second. And on the bottom we have concentration. Now remember, we had a times b, which was second order, so we're going to put a squared above it, times c, which was also first order like a. We can simplify the bottom to give us the following. Then we can cancel out this with one unit from the bottom. That will give us the following. Now we're going to open the brackets, so times moles by 3 and dm cubed by 3. Now bring these up. When you bring them up, don't forget the power changes sign. And that is the units for this particular equation. Sometimes you could get just s to the power of minus 1 as the units. Let's try another one. So here we have D plus E reacts to make R and P, and they've given us the data from a number of experiments. Let's work out the order of D and E. To make things easier, let's ignore this part for now. We can put that back later. Okay, let's start working out the orders. In experiment one, we can see that D has tripled. E has remained constant, which is good, and the rate has times by nine. Now, if it's not obvious straight away how much the rate has changed by, all you have to do is do final divided by initial. So 2.34 divided by 0 0.26, which would give us 9. So D has tripled in concentration and the rate has times by 9. So is D zero order, first order or second order? Let's remember, if it was zero order, the rate would not have changed. Clearly the rate has changed, so it's definitely not zero order. If it was first order, the rate would have changed proportionally. That means if D has tripled, the rate should have tripled as well. Here the rate has times by 9, so it's not first order. Meaning, it must be second order. And we can do a quick calculation to prove that D is second order. 3 to the power of 2 equals 9. Perfect, so we know the order of D. Let's work out the order of E. In experiment 2 to 3, E has doubled. However, D has also changed. D has doubled as well. This is going to make it a little bit problematic when working out the order. However, I'll show you how you can work it out. Don't forget that D is second order. As for the rate, the rate has times by 4. Okay, so we want to know, is E zero order, first order or second order? Based on the following data. Now we could get the following combinations. D of course is second order, and E could be zero order, or E could be first order, or it could be second order. If E was zero order, 2 to the power of zero equals 1. So we have times 1 by E, and D would give us times by 4. 4 times 1 equals 4. And that's what's happened to the rate. So it looks like E might be zero order. However, let's keep going and see what other combinations we get. If E was first order, 2 to the power of 1 would give us 2. So we'll have 4 times 2, which equals 8. This is not what's happened to the rate. So E can't be first order. And if E was second order, 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. So we have 4 from D and 4 from E. 4 times 4 is 16. Again, that's not what's happened to the rate, which means 
that the answer must be E is zero order. Finally, the rate equation is going to be the following. Remember, since D is zero order, it's not going to appear in the rate equation. Okay, now if we want to work out the rate constant, we can do the same method as before, where we look at the same row. However, don't forget that our data had times 10 to the power of minus 3. So make sure you include that in your calculation. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.